Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, as you speak to us this morning. The Lord, you'll just encourage us. Lord, you'll lift us up. The Lord, we'll take our eyes off our present circumstances and look to you. The Lord, as we look to you, we know we can do the impossible because you've promised it in your word. So this morning as I speak, let us be inspired. Let us run the race that you set before us. And let us bring this city to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So the title of the message, for those of you that might take some notes, are No Rival, Expect Revival. No Rival, Expect Revival. The reality is the church is not a place to compete with one another. Amen? It's a place to complete one another. It's where, where someone is strong somewhere and where someone is weak, if the person that is strong can cover the person that's weak in an area, we all benefit. Amen? Amen. And, and, and if you look at the disciples that Jesus put into place, they were all different. They had all different skill sets. Hey? You had fishermen, you had tax collectors, you had just people that operated differently. And in the body of Christ, we all operate differently. Some are very creative. Some are very numbers focused, but with all of us working together, we have the ability to succeed. So where I am this morning is this, is that God is promising you that there is no need to get into rivalry with anybody. Amen? Amen. If you can come to church and say, I've got no rivals, you can relax. You don't have to compete. And I know the prophetic was there this morning, it's saying that if God's come through for you already, praise God that he's come through for you. But don't get upset that he's come through for somebody else and not re- re- you know, visited you quite yet. Amen? We need to celebrate what God is doing in people's lives. And I know this is the year of Jubilee. And I know there are people prospering in our midst. There are people buying second houses. There are people taking on bigger jobs. There are people being able to give more than they have for years in terms of what God is doing in this house. So many of you now know what the mission is. Anyone want to shout out what the mission of this church is? Preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Amen? And so how many of you know the vision of the church? We always talk about vision. It's all quiet now. Come on, someone shout out the first thing. Cover our city. Bless our neighbours. Send to the nation and touch the world. And then we talked the last time I was here anyway was that we're living in, in faith and fellowship experientially. It's the values that bring us together. That every week, we, every week we celebrate what Jesus has done in our life and actually push further out in faith and fellowship with one another to encourage. The Bible talks about stir up the gift within you. Amen? Do not forsake the gathering of the saints. We come on a Sunday to inspire ourselves to be able to go and do what God has promised. Amen? But now comes the point where how many of you played tag when you were growing up? Where someone tags you and says you're on it. Well, this is where we are this morning. It's God has tagged you and said you're on it. That you have a message within you that God wants to get to somebody that's never heard God. I love what Pastor Michael was talking about when he was talking about home. Because this is a spiritual home. Amen? And I remember walking through the doors of this church for the very first time in, back in Unit D. And that's exactly what I felt, that I had come home. I had come to a place that was willing to invest in me and equip me to discover my purpose and begin to trust God for greater things. And I'm pleased to say that 17, 18 years on, God has been doing that in my life. I am still married. Amen. 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 I have three children. Awesome. God is prospering us. God is growing us. God is doing some amazing things. But sometimes when we're doing it and we're coming to church every week, we begin to forget what God has done and we begin to focus on the things that aren't quite perfect. Yeah. And God wants us to lift up our eyes and begin to look at the things that are perfect, which is Him. Amen? Yeah. That if you know God, He will turn your circumstances around to good. Amen? Yeah. Now I'm going to share a story before I get into the Word this morning. Many years ago, when I was backslidden and doing my thing, I went to a nightclub with my friends, and one of my friends was quite short, and I'm quite tall. And he goes on to the dance floor, and and I couldn't dance back then, no matter how many pints I drank. (laughs) (laughs) And he goes on to the dance floor, and he's quite short, and, and, and then all of a sudden I see him come back off, and someone had hit him in the head. So naturally, I'm like, I'm not backing down here. Now, I'm not going on the dance floor to find the guy, but one thing I'm doing, I say, hey, I'm not going to allow these circumstances to ruin your night. Come on, let's go back on the dance floor. So there I am with this short guy. 
walking in onto the dance floor, and I look like the henchman. I look like the big guy. And before I know it, I get punched, and someone nuts me in the face. I'm stood there like, whoa, what's just happened? There's blood dripping down on the floor, and I'm a bit of a mess, and this guy's grabbed his girlfriend and run before I can do anything. Yeah, just as well, Liz, just as well. So anyway, I kind of patch myself up and we all go home. And then I go, I go to the police station the next morning and they want a statement and I'm sharing about what's happened. And, you know, it hurt and my nose was quite large and my eyes are like this. And I, just the whole of my face was black and blue. And, you know, I had my picture taken. I've never seen that picture, but they, had t- they took my picture for records. Yeah, my mum would cry if she saw it. Um, <laughs> and, and they basically sat me down and they said, What's happened to you? Um, we have a fund that exists called criminal compensation. We're going to take your statement and we're going to send it off to the government. And they look after people that have you know, been in an incident whereby they can't get hold of the person and we're going to help you. So I said, great, fine. And I had the interview and didn't think anything of it. Well, about six weeks later, I get a check through for two and a half thousand pounds. Two and a half thousand pounds. I was like, get in. So me and my college mates, <laughs> me and my college, yeah, no, everyone's like, I'm going night clubbing. Yeah. I'm going to get nutted. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so I got this check, two and a half thousand pounds. And, and the most amazing thing is that they, they, I went away to America for a time, which was absolutely awesome and a great time. And I bought a drum kit. Awesome. Now, here's what I'm saying to you is that God can turn all things around to his good. <laughs> Because when I was in the church, when I was in Unit D and sitting there and, and youth was doing things and we moved here and God was doing things in my life, the two things God reminded me of, he said, number one, can you remember that incident? I said, yeah, I can remember that incident. So she went to America. I said, yeah, I remember I went to America. He said, remember what you saw? And I went to Universal Studios. Anyone heard of Universal Studios? And I always see, remember seeing all the, the studios that were there with numbers on. And I believe that's at one stage in my life, I'm going to see that for me and for what God's got planned. Amen. That's incredible. You know, and he reminded me of that when I got born again. The second thing is, he says, you've got a drum kit that you don't play. <laughs> a drum kit that you don't play. So my drum kit, as cool as it was, sits upstairs now, and it's been beaten by countless thousands of youths <laughs> upstairs learning music and doing his thing. But they're blessed because what, what the enemy meant for bad, even though I was in a bad place, God's turned around for his good, amen? Yeah. And what I'm saying to you this, there may be stuff or things that's happened in your life that, you know, pre-being saved, that God can bring to the fore and inspire you for the future. Amen. Yeah. So, you know, this drum kit really wasn't bought. It was, you know, I took a few blows for it, but it's been blessed by someone. Amen. It's been blessed up there and they've been using it and then using it, you know, and even abusing it. Amen. <laughs> but I want you to look at this. John 3.16. We've heard this scripture thousands of times. Those of you who watch sport, you might see the John 3.16. Someone's holding it up. But it says here, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. You see, the gospel message is why we're all here. It's why we gather and we're all beneficiaries of what Christ has done in our life. We can look back and we can remember that moment where we took that step of faith and said, Lord, I don't know if you're real, but I'm just going to pray this prayer and I'm going to trust you to do something with my life. Amen? How many of you have said that prayer? And if you haven't, there'd be an opportunity at the end of the service to say that prayer. But I was reminded that in the midst of God doing some amazing things, we can take things for granted. So yesterday, while the women were eating as much as they possibly could, (laughs) <laughs> at the ladies' breakfast, just one roll and just one piece of bacon. That's all they had. I'm, I'm reliably informed. I had the kids. So I had the kids, and you know there were people in the intercessory prayer chain. I put it up there for Derek to pray to help me with the kids. <laughs> it was on the, on the prayer wall on the WhatsApp group. And we decided to go for a donut, or a couple of donuts. And um, we bought a six box of donuts, and one of those six, one of those six we earmarked for Claire. And Claire was allowed because actually she said she didn't eat at the breakfast, so that was awesome. But there was an extra one. And we sat there and we said, well, what are we going to do with this donut? And we'd walked into, we walked into the circus, Cabot Circus, and, and we, we, we were walking around and we saw a couple of people that were homeless just on the floor on the street. And we said, you know what, guys, we're going to go and find someone and bless someone with a donut. 
So we find this guy, and he's selling the beer. He's saying, would you like a donut? And I was trying to offer him the uh, strawberries and cream one, because the chocolate one I had earmarked for Claire. And I, and I actually went, there's a strawberry and cream one. It's really nice. And he just took the chocolate one. <laughs> I was like, OK, just take it. And he's munching that donut like, you know, like no tomorrow, and he's really blessed or whatever. And we think, awesome, that's great. You know, he's blessed. And we walked away, and we had seen this uh, thing that Nokia had set up. It's uh, like a, a mobile phone thing, and they had a, like, a little competition going on. And what it was is that you would take a picture, because they're launching what they call the new banana phone. Those of you who are old enough in the 90s, you could get these phones that like, were shaped like a banana. And um, they would want it to take a picture of you. Then you take a picture, they upload it, you put in your email address, and a little code comes out the bottom, and you put the code in into a vending machine. You know the ones in the 80s where you put your money in and the chocolate bar just stops there, and then you've got to get someone to try and get it? Because it actually did that a few times. And so you do that and you win a prize. So we thought, great, let's, let's, let's do that. And just as we're about to do it, Bella goes, no, 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 no. We're not going to have a group photo. We go one at a time because we've got a better chance of winning. I was like, get in there, Bella. <laughs> so the four of us now. So yeah, Bella has her picture, Leon has his picture, Taylor has her picture, and then I have my picture. So Bella goes first, Leon and Taylor, they all win. They all win a prize in their code, but it's just like some bananas, you know, the, the edible sweet bananas. And I'm looking forward to my edible sweet banana. So I go there, type in my thing, click it, nothing comes out. I said, ah, this is the perfect vending machine. It doesn't work. And all of a sudden, this envelope drops from the top. So I pull the envelope out, and I open the envelope out, and I've won. I've won on a 70-pound banana phone. <laughs> Woo! Amen. <laughs> and you know what? That banana phone we gave to Leon, isn't it funny that Leon's first phone is shaped like a banana? It just sums Leon up. <laughs> <laughs> bright yellow banana phone, he's like walking around with it or whatever. But God reminded me, he said, well, you're sowing. Yeah. If you're sowing, yeah. I will bless. Amen? Yeah. And he put you in a position to bless. But why I'm sharing this story is this, is that in the midst of this blessing, in the midst of what's going on, and in the midst of mentioning Leon, you can have a phone. There's another little one. Her name is Taylor. She's a little <laughs> bit smaller. Now, Taylor's not happy. Yeah. Taylor looks... She knows that she can shout her voice and it echoes around Cabot Circus. <laughs> but she decides to cry anywhere. So now I've gone from this really great moment to now looking like the worst parent ever. <laughs> and as I was walking away, I've got the phone and we've, you know, we've, we've had a good time in that morning or whatever. At that point, I'm like, Claire, have you finished yet? I need, I need to come back. You need to bow me out. And as we're walking back, God remind me, he said, he said you can get distracted in the midst of blessing by what other people say. Amen? And Taylor's time will come. But as I pointed out to Taylor, what five-year-old can you call? <laughs> hey, Kaya. No, Kaya hasn't got a phone. <laughs> and she eventually calmed down, whatever. But God reminded me, he said, you know what? In the church, we get so distracted by what other people do, and we become unthankful to what God has done for us. Amen? He has given us His Son, and we can experience His blessing, and we're set free from the life of sin and the trouble that we got into, and we have the ability to go and live. Amen? And He says, For God so loved the world. Amen? And here's, this, is, this is bringing it home here. That God says He loves you, and He set us free, but He loves the world. And this place, this building, is representative of his kingdom upon the earth. Amen? And this is our opportunity to demonstrate how much we love of God. And I love what Pastor Jerry said, that when people will come to the conference, they're blessed. There's something sat on their chair. There's this, there's this little Starbucks thing, and we're taking care. Yeah. And God's saying to us, he says that, for God so loved the world. So when people come into this building, they need to know that they're loved. Amen? We need to know, this is not, it's not a thing about perfection, but it's about excellence. That this house looks the part. Amen? Yes. That when people come in, they go, you know what? That church is a church of excellence because they love on people. Yes. And we have the ability to love on people when they come. So I was reminded about you know, when we go to a wedding. When we go to a wedding, we have the little name tags and the name cards. And everything's right and decently in order, isn't it? Yeah, those of you have got, how many of you got married before? How many of you getting married soon? I'm not looking anywhere. 
but the reality is everything's perfect. Everything's in order. We take care and we want people to have the best experience ever. Amen? Yeah. That's what it should be like when people come into church. That it is the best experience they experience. They experience in the love of God. And for most people, they will experience love by, by you know, what you can get, what you can feel, what you can touch. Amen? Yeah. And they're coming to meet the bridegroom. It's like every week they're going and the lost that come in are coming to a wedding. Amen? They don't realize they're the ones that are going to get married. But we need to make ourselves available. We need to invest in this house, in this kingdom, in what he's doing, so that when people come through, they feel cared for. Amen? They feel cared for. They say, you know what? This church blew me away this week in the way that they demonstrated their love for me. You see... There is a building site next door, and there's stuff being built next door. There's a Starbucks. There's all these most amazing things being built next door. But it's an opportunity for us to up our game. It's an opportunity for us to up what we're doing in this house. Amen? No, it's not Wayne's responsibility to go around and try and find the money here, there, and everywhere. Amen? We have the resources. God is prospering each one of us. Amen? And as if this is you, a jubilee, we need to trust him. That when we sow, we will reap. Amen. You see, there's a Starbucks going next door, but you know what Starbucks can't compete with? Giving away free coffee. And you say, whoa, now everyone's getting a bit nervous. Can't we? I was giving away the free coffee. But here's the thing. We could give away free coffee. It's 10 of us got together and say, we're going to give £50 a month to begin to make people that come in new to have free coffee. Amen. That's thinking outside the box. That's understanding that I love the unlovable and I want to bless them in a way that I can bless them. We all have it within our means to bless. Amen? And these are practical examples of how we can bless those that come through the door. Amen? You need to understand, there are going to be thousands of people coming across this this, this place. This building is going to be visible, amen? And people are going to come in here and wonder what's going on in here, and we want to welcome them with open arms. We want to make sure that they've got a place to sit. We want to make sure that we can bless them with a Bible. We want to bless them in a way that they say, you know what, there's, there's one thing about church. I thought they didn't care, but they do. But they do. You see, God is getting us to a place that he wants us to reset our attitude. He wants to reset our attitude into a place of gratitude. A place of gratitude. It begins when we get born again and say, thank God I'm not where I was 17 years ago. I thank God for that. Amen? And some of you can think back now and say, thank God that those decisions that I was making didn't happen. Amen? Amen? There's things that I was praying to God for that would happen. For some reason, it didn't work out. But now I look back in hindsight, thank God that it didn't come through. You see, the good news for us is where it all begins, in that God loves us. He sent his son for us, and he has given us a message to share with the world. The gospel message is quite simple, to say that there was a man that loved so much that he chose to die for you. Amen? And he set you free. But it says that God so loved the world. We need to not see the world as an enemy, but love it. And we're coming to church and we're seeing the world as this big evil thing. It's only a big or evil thing if we're not going out and shining our light. Amen? Because God has put within us the capacity to share the love of Christ. It comes through generosity. So those of you who are taking, taking uh, uh, notes, it says, number one, accept Jesus. It says, for God so loved the world. In the Amplified, it says, for God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world. God loves the world. He sent his son to die for it. Amen. There are people perishing every day. And God has given us the ability to show them the way. Now, there's a lot of fake news out there, hey? You heard of fake news? I saw this amazing clip the other day. There was this guy, you know, the hurricane that's been going on? There was this guy, and he's talking on the hurricane, and he's going like this. It's really windy out here, and we're really struggling, and the wind and the rain. And there's only a bit of wind, and he's like, oh, yeah. you know, it's really tough. And in the background, you can see two guys casually walking in the background. <laughs> so as the camera pans out, there's two guys just walking around like this. 
There's so much fake news out there, but you have the good news. Amen? You have the real news. You have the news that can change people's lives. You see, in business, there's two types of business, really. There's one that's business to business, so you do business to business, and there's business to consumer. A business to consumer is like retail, yeah? Anyone heard of retail? So your business is basically around people. And reality is, is that this, this place is about people, amen? Yeah. It's about investing into people. That the finances that come into this house, we then distribute to help people in any way we can, amen? That we can give people the, the, the tools and the resources to go and live the life that God created. That's where God wants us. He wants us to have the, have the empathy to preach the kingdom of God, to say, I was in a situation like you, but let me tell you my story of how God changed my life. That's empathy. Putting yourself in somebody else's shoes and beginning to say, I remember when I was there. Yeah. But when we forget, we don't care. Yeah. But we need to remember where we come from. Yeah. The other way is, the other pillar of, of success, certainly in the, in, into the business to uh, consumer world is there's empathy and then there's adding value and we add value because we heal the sick amen? amen so we can speak the language that god has got for us to begin to speak into people's lives in the same manner that the world do it amen, amen. you know what a brand's like if you put this hair i haven't got hair but you know what i mean if you put on this shampoo you feel worth it <laughs> Woo! yeah you feel you feel different and then you, the added value piece is you want to tell everybody about it. Yeah. yeah? You see, if I found a shampoo and put it on my hair and my hair grew back, I'll tell everybody about it. <laughs> Amen? You know, this is caffeine one I've seen. I may try it out. <laughs> but the point is, if you experience something good, you want to tell somebody about it. And there's no coincidence that the greatest or the best, um, the best uh, way of advertising is through word of mouth. Yeah. But that's what Jesus did. Amen? The world are not doing anything new. They're just following what Jesus did. Amen? Jesus put people in the shoes and he understood where they were and said, I'll come to set you free. And he added value by setting them free. Amen? And he said, now go and tell someone. And they did. That's how God works. That's how the gospel works. So some of you have experienced God breaking through in the year of Jubilee, but you're not telling anyone. You're keeping it quiet. And God said, no, start sharing what's happening in your life. Start giving other people within the congregation hope that he come through. You see, the blessing is not for you. Your blessing is to say, look at what the Lord has done. Amen. That when people come in here, they begin to see that there is a difference. There is a change. You, you know, if God's prospering you and you're, this year, you've, you know, you've gone from 100,000 income to 5, uh, 500,000 income, don't keep it quiet. Share. Amen? Amen. Share. So, you know, look what the, God, the Lord has done. Amen. You see, some of us don't want to share. Some of us just want to keep it quiet. Some of us want to, don't want anybody to know because, you know, therefore there comes a responsibility with it. But the reason he's prospering you is because of the responsibility that we have. Amen? The responsibility we have is to begin to invest into his kingdom. Begin to invest into the people that are not even here yet. Amen? Yeah. You know, we've talked for age, for, for, for years. You know, wouldn't it be great if something happened that we would get lots of people walking across this place? Well, now we have it. Amen? <laughs> that people are going to be walking and they're going to walk in front of the church. We've never had that before. There are going to be people around this building every day. Yeah. Isn't it incredible what God is doing? He's, he's using that to bring people in. Amen? But when people come in, we've got to be ready for them. Amen? We've got to be ready to share our time, our talent, and our treasure to begin to make sure that they never leave. Amen? Yeah. That they come. They might come just to be curious, but they come and then they, they, they see revival. They see, see things changing in people's lives and say, you look different. There you all are. <laughs> you see, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, they've worked together because they love the world. Amen? They want to see the world set free. You know, Jesus fed the 5,000. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Wouldn't it be good that we could give 5,000 people coffee for free? Yeah. Wouldn't it? Yeah. But we could afford it. If we all begin to say, you know what, what does the bookshop need a month to function to be able to achieve that? 
Let me be part of that. Let me give to be able to make a difference because now I get it. Our generosity is the thing that's going to speak to people out there. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Yeah. It's practical stuff. Yeah. It's just practical stuff. Yeah. But you know, if they come and say, why are you going to spend three quid on some lukewarm coffee? Come in here for free. <laughs> come in here for free and experience living water. Amen? Amen. Come and experience the life of God, the life that God has it. Amen. We need to be excited about the opportunity that is coming our way, and we need to be ready for it. The second thing, the second thing, it says, to live free. It says, he sent. It says, then he even gave his one and only begotten son. So God loved the world so much that he gave. There was an expression of his love, which was his son. We are being stirred up for the year of Jubilee, because God wants us to express his son. And that's going to cost for some of us. It's going to mean that you're going to have to stay after church for half an hour and talk to someone you've never met before. Amen? I'm always reminded, and I may have shared it on the stage or not, but I, I, I asked for forgiveness, you heard this story. But always remember, it was a Saturday night when we were doing Saturday night church, and I was about to walk down the steps, and I was tired, and I wanted to go home. And I knew there was church the next day. I think it was two services the next day as well. So you guys got it light, okay? Yeah. And, and I was just about walking down there. And there, in the corner, over my shoulder, were two people sat in the corner. Very quiet. And I had a choice. Do I go home? Or do I stay behind and talk? Well, you know what? I stayed behind and talked. And I chatted to them. And I found out they were getting married very quickly. And we found out that they needed some help. And they needed some guidance. They needed some... Some, someone to come alongside them. And we took that upon ourselves. And it's not bigging myself up, it's the Holy Spirit all over me, yeah? yeah. But do you know who they were? Andrew and Wacker. They're our youth pastors, hey? Yeah. God brings people into this house, amen? God brings people into this house to resource us to do the work of the kingdom. But some of us aren't willing to be able to step outside of our time frames and our time zones to begin to engage with who God sent him through the door. Amen. Amen. Now, I am blessed that the Holy Spirit was on me to stay behind and chat to them. And look what they're doing now. God has done an amazing work in their life. Amen. But because of their obedience to God, he's doing an amazing work in other people's lives. Amen. And I know that Andrew and Wacker, they, as a result of that, they do look around to see who's new and see that because they realize what God did in their life. Amen. It's not bigging myself up. It's again, God is bringing people through the door every day. Yeah. New people. But we have the ability to connect and engage with them and show them love. And for some of us, it is literally putting our hand in our pocket and buying them a coffee. Yeah. That's it. That's all it is. Yeah. You see, change, Ed Cole says this thing, a change isn't change until it's change. And we have the ability to change what people experience. They used to being rejected in the world. Amen. Every day. They used to be in it because they don't look a certain way or they don't fit in a certain way. But let it be that when they come into the church, that we're friendly enough to help them, for friendly enough to find them a seat, for friendly enough to begin to invest in them and talk to them and, and converse with them and say, How can I help you? How can we actually help? When me and Claire got saved, we went into church. And the most amazing thing here was that I didn't want to get up to get to church on a Sunday morning. Certainly, if you know, I've been up late the night before, yeah? And then you're getting up at 10 o'clock in the morning to come to church. And I'm saying this because we need to change our perspective in the way that we see church services. You might get more unsafe people coming to church on a Sunday evening. Amen? Now, we've seen people being born. Haven't we, Pastor Mark? saw someone born again the other day through the prayer meeting. Yeah. Amen? And that, it's a prayer meeting, but in that being prayed for, because we're praying for the lost, they realize that we care. Amen? So from when we went to church, we went to church in the evening and people come alongside us and helped us and, and we got born again and then we, we began a journey. But here's the thing for us today is that we need to do everything we can as a body to enable that even the evening works. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. And I know Dawn and I know the team and they're struggling at this moment in time to have children's church in the evening. How many of the dads are going to be here and say, hey, I'll get involved and do children's church in the evening? And I don't mind doing it, so I'm going to pop my hand up. Yeah. So I'm doing children's church. <laughs> <laughs> in the evening, to allow more people to come, to bring their families or to bring their next door neighbor along and say, your kids are going to be looked after so that you can experience God. 
Yeah. Now, is there anyone else here with their hand up? I'm looking at everyone and sat on their hands. Huh? Anyone else willing? Raf, come on. <laughs> it's either that or you're part of the decor team. One of the two, Raf. <laughs> But the point is, the solution is right here. And we're looking for other people to do it. And we say, well, it's not my responsibility. I'm too busy. I can't do this because I'm too... You know what? If we remember that for God so loved the world that he sent, he's sending you. He's sending you. He's sending you to get involved because God is sending people across our path. People that do not know God. And I, like the people that used to go to church on a, on a Sunday evening to facilitate people like me and Claire, then I need to pass that on. Amen. So if I get in church once a month on a, a children's church on a Sunday night, so be it. If it means that a family can come, they can put their kids somewhere and they can eat and see the whole family situation turn around. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now the great thing about this service is it's been recorded and the people that put their hands up, <laughs> we're going to be checking. But the reality is, it's within our ability to be like Christ. Amen? Amen. For God so loved the world that he sent. And then the last thing I want to share is that whoever believes in him should not perish and have everlasting life. God wants us to believe in the good. His why is your why. Why did God send his son? Because he wanted to release people. Amen? Amen. That should be the same desire within your heart. It's say, you know what? I want to release people. I want to see them break through. I don't want them to perish. I want them to have ever, everlasting life. You know, for me, I work hard and I do stuff, but Sunday's God's day. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Sunday's God's day because it's the, the, I have been blessed by God. Yeah. And Sunday is my ability to pass it on. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Pass it on to other people that do not know him. You see, I've got taught, I've got equipped, and yeah, I learn all the time, and, and people are speaking into my life, that's awesome. But I have an ability to help people, amen, to be able to give back, and we have the ability to give back too. And so when you look around and you go, well, what about this, or what about that, you know what, sometimes the answer is you. You're looking for somebody else, and God's saying, no, you do it. And you say, well, I don't want to do it because that's just too much, and God's saying, what, well, I died on the cross. Let's just compare here. He died on the cross. And you're moaning because you might miss pole dark. <laughs> it's gone down on a few deaf ears. <laughs> you can record it. <laughs> you see, you have revival when you have no rival. What do I mean by that? I mean this, is that there are so many things competing for our attention. So many things competing for our attention to take us off the path that God has called us to function and operate with. But we're here for one reason and one reason only is to pass on the good news. And if we're so busy that we can't pass on the good news, then why are we here? The good news should be our priority. We should do everything we can to facilitate that. We should use our time, our talent and our treasure to be able to impact the lives of people. You see, when we have an overflow of God's love, and we know what God did for us, did in our lives, we'll have the compassion to care. The greatest marketing strategy in the world is care. Amen? You want to see this church grow? Care. It's not clever slogans, it's not, gra- it's not music, it's not anything. It's just care. Show the love of Christ to the person next to you. Amen. And in showing the love of Christ to the person next to you, they're full of the love of God, then they will pass that love of Christ on to somebody else. Sometimes don't just keep passing it on to one another, pass it on to someone else. You heard that thing called Pay It Forward? Ever seen the film Pay It Forward? Well, that's what God's saying. Pay it forward. If someone does a good deed to you, don't feel that you have to do it back to them. Rather, pass it on. Find somebody else that needs that gift passed it on. And if we have that attitude and the way that we function and the way that we flow, we'll be known as a house of love. Why? Because we love one another. Amen? There's no competition in this house anymore. Amen? There's no competition. If we want to see revival, there should be no rival. 
See, revival comes where everyone's humble and everyone knows what God is doing in their life and says, you know what, I love God. I, I, God has saved me. He set me free. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for the, uh, the lost. I thank God for what he's done and never forget him what God did. He's having that attitude of gratitude. And when we're humble, God then begins to move. He'll resource you. He'll give you the voice. He'll give you the influence that you need. He can change situations around like that. But God wants to know he's got your heart. He wants to know you've got your heart first and foremost. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves the world and he wants us to accept the challenge that he's given us. He sent the very best. He wants us to be demonstrators, not procrastinators. And he wants us to believe in good. Your why is the reason why. The why he saved you is now to pass it on to somebody else. Amen? That's the reason why we live. There are thousands of people coming across these doors over the next few months. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Amen. Gonna, listen, that place is going to be packed next door. They're going to wonder where all the other cars are going. Yeah? It's going to happen. But God wants us to know one thing, that when they come in, that he knows we're prepped and ready. Pastor Jerry says this statement. He says, preparation, or success is where preparation meets opportunity. Amen? This message this morning, if you get anything from it this morning, is to be prepared. Be prepared for what God is doing. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this because this, I've seen this the other week. This is a symbol. Look at the state of that symbol. Look at the state of that symbol. Now, what I'm showing you this is this. When we forget where God's taken us from, amen, we begin to neglect the very thing that God's put in our hands, amen? We begin to be blinded and we think, looking at our life where everything's wrong and this isn't happening and God's not come through for you. But there are needs in this house that God has given us the ability to address. Amen? There's a scripture as I looked at the symbol God gave me. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I have nothing. This is God's house. We, as God prospers us, gives us the ability to invest in God's house. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God doesn't want us to operate like this anymore, where we take it for granted. When people come in, God wants to see us to have the best. But as I said before, the resources aren't coming from Wayne's pocket or whoever else's pocket. And Wayne, head of assets, is trying to figure things out. The resources are in your pocket. Yeah. This symbol doesn't cost a great deal of money. Amen. Now, I've given a drum kit. <laughs> Does anyone want to give towards a symbol? Amen. That's love. Right there. And God is challenging us this morning to say, you can see the need this morning. Who's going to meet the need? Because that's how simple it is. When I see the need, we're looking around. Who's going to meet it? And God says, no. The person that invests in the kingdom of God, God will bless. God will not forget. Amen. And actually, I know this actually isn't the church's symbol. This is somebody else's symbol. Amen. They bought it to cover in the gaps. So this morning, I don't know. I'm not here to like start pulling the stage apart and say, can someone buy a symbol and buy some sneakers? <laughs> so I could. But the reality is it's a demonstration. It's a vi- I don't want you to forget the symbol, hey? Because yeah. there should be nowhere in this house that looks second best. Yeah. But God is saying you have the resources in your pocket to show love. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave of his best. This doesn't look his best, does it? We can do something about it. It starts in the small things. Preparation meets opportunity. Today, all I've done is challenge you. (laughs) Today, all I've done is challenge you to say, to get prepared is right in front of your eyes. As you walk around this building, you'll see stuff that's not perfect. And God's saying, you're the answer. Just ask God how you can do it. If, God, if you knew that, if you had sowed in for that symbol today, that God will bless you somewhere down the line, you'll go, well, yeah, I'm happy to do it. Maybe, maybe the sowing and reaping thing is just not, just not there for you yet. Maybe you don't quite get it yet. I'm telling you now it works. From the guy 
with the big issue and the donut. He then blessed us with a phone. Amen? Leon last week worked on the camera team for the first time. I don't know if you saw that on social media. Literally, within a couple of days, he got blessed with the most amazing pair of trainers. More money than I'd ever spare on a pair of trainers. Just because he just sowed his time. He did it with no expectation. But God loves people that love his house. Amen. And when you love upon his house, God will ensure that he'll continue to give you resources and be able to do and be the hands and the feet and the voice in the community that God has. Amen. So I just want us all to stand up this morning. I just want to lead us in a confession. Thank you, David. I want to lead us in a confession. I want us to repent corporately. We, where we've been not in gratitude to what God has done with us. Amen? Where we've got our eyes focused on things that aren't perfect and forgot what he's already given us. Amen? So take the hand of the person next to you and we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you so loved the world that you gave your very best. I thank you that you give me opportunity to give of my very best. Father, forgive me where I've forgotten what you did and restore to me the joy of my salvation that, my, that I might get excited about the opportunity that is coming across our path. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.